Hello and welcome to Metal Vice, a podcast where we talk about all things music. <laughs> well, the things we care about. Right, which is mainly metal music and live music. I'm one of your hosts, Brian, joined the other host. Karen. Karen, what is today's episode about? Uh, we're going to talk about Guns and Roses. Yes, this was at Wrigley Field on August 24th. Part of their North America tour, which was part of their like worldwide tour. Or something. How many North America tours are there? <laughs> Too many. Um, I feel like everybody's just saying North America tour. Yeah, we're gonna do a at our year in review. I think we're doing like a, our top tour names. Uh, North America tour are very boring names <laughs> to have for yeah. your tour. Like come up with something cool. Yeah. Uh, or if it's just your album name, that's kind of lame. Also, it's it's better than North America tour. But like the episode before this was the re Imperia tour. A little better because you're like you're tacking onto your your name. It but, makes sense. Yeah. But the one after this is Mega Monsters Tour. Like that's a cool name. <laughs> North Anyways. America, not so much. Yeah. Anyways, I just I can't believe how many North America tours we've seen this year. It, I know. It's a, not it's not annoying, it's just kind of disappointing, I guess. Hey, you're creative people. Come up with some better creative <laughs> names here. Come on. Put a little bit of effort into this mm-hmm. thing. Um, tickets for this, though, $25 what we paid for tickets. 25 Not secondary market. This is the actual price of the ticket was $25. Yep. $12.13 in fees, so, you know, 50% in fees, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever. It's a $25 ticket. So we had originally looked at um, potential. We weren't going to buy, like, field tickets for this show. Um, we had potentially looked at getting rooftop access or a rooftop ticket yeah. for the show. Yeah. If you don't know anything about Wrigley, it's a baseball stadium where the Chicago Cubs play in the heart of a neighborhood, right? And rooftops are like, it's it's an open stadium and they have buildings around it and people have built rooftops on it. And some of the tickets you can buy are those rooftop tickets. And I can't remember what the prices were. Do you? Like 150 I think, a ticket. Yeah. Something like that. That's all inclusive too, so that's doesn't seem like a bad price. And for me, I just kind of wanted to sit back and listen to the music. I didn't need to be in the crowd. Yeah, but yeah, that basically what you were gonna say before I cut you off. Yeah, basically. All right. Well, I'm sorry about that. That's I just okay. Wanted to tack on some color commentary around Your the rooftops. Excite excitement of Wrigley Field. I I am excited. I love <laughs> Wrigley Field. I'm a big baseball fan, a big Cubs fan. Um, so. Seeing my first show there a few years ago was kind of like just, oh, this is amazing. I love this. And I love seeing shows there. We we go to a lot of baseball games there, so I know my way around. We know our way around the stadium. We know how to get in and out really easily. It's, I don't know, I I love seeing shit there. It's so cool to be in like, the, like just in the middle of like a little neighborhood type thing and this open air. I don't know. It's It's fun. I enjoy it a lot. Okay. Being on the field is a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. It's okay. I don't like the seats aspect of the field. I mean, granted, we could have, I don't know how much pit tickets would have cost, but. A lot, I think. Pits were, they? pits were pretty expensive. We'll get into that, but it was pretty bare bones in the pit. Yeah. Um. But it's, it's fun to be there. You can see the ivy. Uh, looking up at the, the, the booths where they do all the radio announcing and all of that is really fun from the outfield. Also going to see Dead and Company with a friend there, I learned how to do the seats where you don't actually go to your seat. You kind of just stand in the aisles or stand along the walkways a little bit and you get a better experience out there for sure. Because yeah. the seats are very, like, you're very claustrophobic a little yeah. bit. I don't know. I, I love it. And 25 bucks, though. Those aren't good seats by any means, were they? No, they were the aisle seats. Well, no, no, wait. They were the last s- seat in the stadium. Or the last row Bro. in the stadium. And we were on the stairs. So basically, like, our seat was as you walked down the stairs. <clears throat> so they were crappy. Yeah. Um, when we bought them, there were a lot of seats around us. And it kind of made me laugh. Like, we've seen two previous shows from the very last row um, at oh, yeah. the stadium. Yeah, we saw. Soldier Field, we saw. Uh, Rolling Stones. Yep. And then Chase Center. Chase San Center. Francisco. We saw s 2 with Metallica. Yep. And both times, great experiences all around. You're not getting the same experiences you would closer down in. Well, I mean, I don't know. S and like, you would have S and M. I actually really liked because they also had like the circle thing, or like so the whole stage like rotated. So you saw the entire orchestra by by time it was done, 
and but then they also had the circles on the top so you saw like the imagery of metallica and the colors and everything so it was a really cool stage yeah that was really cool rolling stones however was just a normal stage and we were really really far away yeah so it was like basically you were looking at the screens every once in a while or just listening to the music yeah and with the stones like we're not super big rolling stones fans like no there are people there who were talking like i've seen them 37 times around us right and we're like we just happened to get tickets so we came to the right. show uh the joke was i they're legends and i wanted to see them live yeah. before they die that was the joke when we bought the tickets and then a little bit after we bought the tickets mick jagger announced he was going in for heart surgery i was like holy shit i was just joking i <laughs> didn't want them to die but we did get to see the whole lineup before charlie passed so yeah. that was nice yeah uh and it was a good show it Whatever. And for $25 to see Guns N' Roses in the last seat in the house, whatever. We're fine with that. I did buy aisle seats thinking they'd be aisle seats, but no, the last row is just a row and that's where the seat started. (laughs) Yeah. So basically nobody was in front of us because we were looking down the stairs. Yep. So it was, it was interesting. And I went to a baseball game a few days before this and I wandered up that way to, to find my seat, to find our seats where they were. That way when we got up there, we can check it out. But up in that area, there's restrooms, there's concession stands, so you don't have to, like, walk all the way down to the main concourse and walk your way back up. It's a really decent area. I yeah, like it a lot. I like the... So, up in that area, I like the terrace things that they have. The, those are pretty cool, but, I mean, obviously, if you're out there, then you're not watching the show or watching the baseball game if you're at a baseball game, but it was cool to see that. Yeah, and when I went to the baseball game, the other thing I noticed going up there to the seats is... It was a decently warm day that day, and there was a really nice breeze coming off the lake across our backs up there, and I was like, oh, this is going to be nice, because I think it's supposed to be a little hot that night. We go to see Guns N' Roses, um, and I, it wasn't really a little hot at all. It was it a was furnace. A, God, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it was 103 normal temp. I don't... Oh, no, no, 90-something 90, 90 normal temp, and it was 117 heat index. Yeah, we... We took an Uber up there, and when they dropped us, I was, like, right at the corner of the stadium, which was really yeah, nice. Yeah, as close as he could get, which we weren't expecting that. We were expecting him to drop us off at, like, Irving Park Road, and we had walked down. Yep. But he was like, oh, no, 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 it's hot, it's hot. Like, let me keep going. I'm like, okay. And right before he, he dropped us off, I know you looked at your phone. I don't know more what temperature it was. I just remember you showing it. Yeah, like, I have a screenshot. Hold it's on. It's 117 degrees out. Yeah. And I was, or it feels that like was, 117. That was heat index, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was like, God fucking damn, this is hot. Yeah, but all day I kind of like was dreading it. It was 96 with 117 degree. See, I wasn't necessarily dreading it because I knew we'd mosey over there, it would be hot. But when we get up there, we're going to have that nice breeze. And we got up there, we weren't really all that hot. It was definitely hot, especially getting dropped off so close. It was comfortable, not comfortable, but it wasn't, it wasn't miserable. I didn't feel, you may be different. I didn't like it at all. (laughs) But I was like, we're going to get up there, we're going to sit down. And like I said, it wasn't miserable. Then we sat down and there was no air. The breeze was gone and it it happens. Very rarely does it happen that there's no wind at Wrigley, but it happens. And God damn it did get miserable then. Yeah. But we didn't say this opening with Guns N' Roses, we get the pretenders. Um, the we were really confused on the time of this starting as well. The doors, I think, I thought was five thirty, but they said that's when the, we got an email earlier that day saying the performance is five thirty. Mm-hmm. Doors roughly four, approximately four. Um, we had some trouble because we had to like move our car back and forth and we couldn't and all that kind yeah, of there shit. Yeah, there was stuff going on in our garage and our building. So we didn't even get the Uber until about five. 20 ish somewhere in there it was after five i thought it was right around five i thought it was at five so right around five whatever and i think we we're supposed to be dropped off at like 5 40 or so and i was like oh shit we're gonna miss some of the pretenders don't really know who they are it's kind of disappointing that we're not going to see them whatever i actually don't get dropped off until about six almost we get in we go get merch and while we're waiting in line for merch then the pretenders went mm-hmm. on which was a little after six. Yeah. So kind of cool that we didn't really miss any of their set. 
kind of weird that it was so off. I, that could have just been the temperature, maybe. Yeah, like I don't know what down. caused everything to happen. Because, like, yeah, like you said, like, we thought the doors were 530. Then you got the email saying it was 4 o'clock was the doors. But then they didn't even start until after 6. So, yeah, it was kind of weird. But kind of in a good way where we Yeah, I mean, miss, we didn't miss that much, yeah. Maybe, like, one song. But maybe. we were, like, in, we could hear it perfectly fine. Yep. Um. Anyway, we get to our seat, and the pretenders take the stage, and we're listening to them. Uh, what did we have for a set list for them? Yeah, so they opened with My City Was Gone, Talk of the Town, Kid, Turf Accountant Daddy. Cool name. <laughs> uh, boots of a Chinese Plastic. Uh, don't Get Me Wrong. Back on the Chain Gang. I'll Stand By You. Junkie Walk. Middle of the Road. And then they ended with Mystery Achievement. So this is a band. Uh, not Well, this is obviously a <laughs> band. This is a show with two bands. Yes. Guns N' Roses and The Pretenders. Paid 25 bucks to see this. Yes. A week or so before, we saw Ghost at the Reimperia Tour with Ghost and Amina Marth. Different music. I would say a better show overall. Mm-hmm. That one. But the price for that, like, 270 bucks versus 25 and this is like a proper long set this was a long set yeah basically is what i'm getting at yeah and like for a two band show yeah this was a long set where previously for amina marth who opened for ghost that seemed very short yeah. um so i was very happy with this set it was very good very well done yeah i don't really remember the music that much i just remember telling you like i don't hate this but i don't really remember Definitely an old rocky sound. To yeah, it. yeah. And by old rocky, I mean like a seventies rock sound to it. Yeah. So we, so the lead is a female lead for or at least that we saw. I don't know if that's like original or not, but that's what we saw. Because um, I really don't know anything about yeah, the standards. But I'm gonna compare it to when we saw Stevie Nicks, okay, and Billy Joel, okay, because it's almost to you. It's like in the same well, vein. This the music's similar. Yeah. yeah okay. In my mind. Um, but I would much rather listen to the Pretenders sing than Stevie Nicks sing. Okay. I don't know what it is, but like, it just seemed more flowy. There wasn't the whole, like, I'm going to stop and talk about who wrote this song and why they wrote it and when I sang it and blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm you just really going to sing my, that. oh my God, I hated it so much. Like, so this was much way more enjoyable to me. There was definitely crowd interaction. There was sure. crowd interaction, but it wasn't like yeah, I get you. Such and such wrote this song in 1971, <laughs> and I sung it on this album, and blah 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 blah. I don't know. I I get that. Uh, Kiss does that a lot. <laughs> they the do songs do it. from 1972, and they just like they're, they're and I have my tube top on, so you can see like my tummy. They're, they're, they're thinking like <laughs> the wheels are spinning of like what the fuck year was this yeah um I, I wouldn't go that far personally but i definitely get it i i could see you it was definitely more the tempo was a little better like yeah. a little higher like you know was different here more your speed um i don't know how she did that with i mean she had like boots on up to her knees she had jeans on yeah they were all out there dancing around like they put on a really yeah. good show for being so fucking hot they did make a few comments about it like i think one of the comments that i picked up right away and the only one i think i really remember there were a few political comments i believe but i can't remember oh maybe i just wasn't paying attention um to but the one i did pick up on was thank you for coming out so early it's goddamn hot we truly appreciate you coming out something along yeah those i lines. remember that i remember that comment yeah um that was like right before they were done i think, I think so yeah. yeah but overall for a band i i'm pretty sure i've heard this band and i think i've heard some of the music for sure if you like just in passing or something right yeah but so i thought that i went to the state fair with my grandfather to see the pretenders 100 percent, i thought this but i don't remember the electric guitars which my grandmother has the thing about electric guitars shaking her gizzards yeah where she won't listen to them which she wasn't there which is why you and your grandpa went. oh maybe maybe <laughs> but also i don't remember if there was a female lead or not okay but I swear I saw them with my grandfather. Could have. It was like at a free stage. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was like, I don't know what stage it is now, but it's like the Channel 8 stage. I don't even know if they still have it there. But 
yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe I saw them. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I mean, the some of the songs sounded very familiar to yeah. me. Um, so it, it's something I've, I've definitely more than likely heard in passing. Yeah. Just nothing that, like, yeah. oh, my God, this is amazing. I need to go listen to this again type thing. Not saying I, it's, we added it to the playlist for yeah. sure. It comes on. We're going to listen to it. Um, Maybe. I enjoyed it. It was a good <laughs> set, I thought. No, I, th- I thought it was a good set, too. Yeah. Especially considering the heat. Yeah. Like, holy shit, this is good. Yeah. It sounded great, too, yeah. where we were sitting. Yeah. Um, yeah, this sounded. We'll, we'll get to that. But, <laughs> yeah, there was no sound issues for the Pretenders. No. Other than the heat that we had, there was a little bit of breeze that came in every now and then. But yeah. other than the heat, like. You, you turn it down from 117 to maybe 95, and it would have been fine for, like, a real feel. It would have been a lot better. Okay. Whatever. 74 uh, would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I did notice during this set as well, the seats around us were not mostly empty, but there were a lot of empty seats a lot, a lot yeah. around us. Same with the floor. A lot of empty seats. The pit looked very sparse. Yeah. Um. It's almost like people didn't get there. I wonder if a lot of people thought the doors were at 530 also. Or people were just like, I'm not going early because it's fucking hot. I did feel out a lot better for Guns N' Roses. We'll get into that still too. But I I thought that was honestly, I didn't think it would fill out much more than that. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't because of the heat and whatnot. But um, yeah, good set all around. And yeah, anything else about the Pretenders? No, that's fine. Um. I did go down in between the sets to get like more drinks or something, go to the bathroom, whatever. And I remember coming back and sitting, sitting down waiting and they had guns and roses themed imagery spinning on the top or on the, on the big screens. And about the time I think they should have came on stage, you just hear the crowd cheer. And I thought somebody saw them like walk out. Cause it happens every now and then, right? Yeah. You see the drummer come out. Yeah. Like generally it's like people in the front, like see it or like, People near the stage see it, and then everybody starts cheering. And then everybody around us started cheering, and I think you got like a giant smile on your face, and was like, "What? I, I'm looking. I don't see anybody." And then I felt it. The wind had shifted off yeah. the lake yeah. in, and it was that cool yeah. breeze that you that you get in the fall with with Wrigley. Yeah, like I said it to our Uber driver. I was like, "It would be a perfect day if the wind was off the lake today, <laughs> um, because it's just always cooler." And sure enough. It happened while we were at the show. And somebody near us was like, oh, they turned the air conditioner on for us. (laughs) But that's what it kind of felt like was just like the air conditioning turned on after it being so, so hot. Which I think the temperature only dropped like 10 degrees. But it was so, so cool. And that's what I was saying where it's like I expected, all right, fine. It's a miserable day. It's super hot. But those seats up there against that rail... Mm -hmm. With the wind blowing in, it's going to feel amazing. It's going to feel fine. We're going to have a great time. And once it changed, it wasn't miserable anymore. It was pleasant. Well, the heat wasn't miserable. Yes, the heat was not miserable. Um, you're alluding to Guns N' Roses, so let's just dump into okay. Guns N' Roses here. Um, why don't you lead off, read off what we had for us? Set? Sure. It's so easy. Bad obsession. Chinese democracy. Uh, is that Slither? Yeah, Slither, a revolver cover. Oh, okay. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle, Pretty Tied Up, Mr. Brownstone, Hard School, Double, sorry, (laughs) Double Talk and Jive, Perhaps, Absurd, Rocket Queen, Estranged, Down on the Farm, Live and Let Die, This is Love, oh, sorry, This I Love, You Could Be Mine, TVI, Reckless Life, Silver War, slash guitar, oh, uh, slash guitar solo, a sweet child of mine, November Rain, knocking on heaven's door, and their main set ended with Night Train. Uh, they had a three set encore with pa- uh, Coma, Patience, and Paradise City. They had a really long set. Yeah, it was a really long set. Um, really good. I I was very pleased with the length of the set. Um. I'm a Guns N' Roses fan. Okay. I've been for a long time. Yeah, I knew like four songs. I mean, like four songs that like I could have sang along to. I think you knew more than I you think thought. S- yeah. I think so, but what I mean is like that I know the words to oh, the songs. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. It's played on laser a lot, so yeah. you always get this on. And I don't know why 
but I never got super pissed when Guns N' Roses <laughs> came on, but Ozzy, for some reason, whenever Ozzy came you on, I'd be... I was going to say, because Laser always plays uh, Welcome to the Jungle or Paradise City. Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, um, November Rain from time to time, Civil War, not as much. Oh, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Sweet so. Child of Mine. Yep. Um, do you say Paradise City? Yeah. I'm trying to think what else we would always hear. That's what I remember. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I think though my big thing with the whole Aussie thing is it was always in the morning when I'm going to school yeah. and always at n- in the afternoon when I leave school to go to work and it was always you the same it. Aussie song. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, uh, where this would be just as frequent, but I wouldn't hear it as often. Right. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, a, a fan of Guns N' Roses for sure. Not like an unbelievable, oh my God, this is the greatest band of all time. Like, I don't know their catalog super in depth. Um, mainly, it's the big three for me that I know of theirs. Usual Illusion 1 and 2 and uh, Appetite are like the three that I listen to the most and really the only three I listen to. Um, we have Chinese Democracy on vinyl, which is kind of funny because it's kind of a garbage album. It's not really that good. Oh, okay. Uh, it took so long to come out with. And I I don't know if that's like the delays in that or just the the relationship between Axel and Slash and the other members. But when they played Slither from Velvet Revolver, I was like, oh, shit, I didn't think they'd play this. But a lot of the members of Guns N' Roses left and formed Velvet Revolver. And this was their first big song that came out. It's a great song. And I was just like, I did not anticipate Axel being like, I will sing this song. Yeah. But they did. It was great. It was awesome. But you kind of alluded to this not being a good set, right? You didn't enjoy this? Well, there was a couple things. Oh, go ahead. So we noticed it right away with the first song. But one, it echoed really, really bad where we were sitting. And two... Every time Axel sang, it didn't sound good. I don't know how to explain it, but. Yeah, I remember sitting there and you could tell that the, it's starting to kick up. It's about to start. Like they're coming out and I was starting to think to myself, all right, what's their first song going to be? I, I know some of their big stuff. I know what it's, it's not going to be Welcome to the Jungle. That's probably going to be toward the end of the set. It might be their closer. It was in the middle, obviously, or toward the beginning, actually. Um, and it, they come out, they start with, it's so easy. The crowd starts cheering like, oh, sweet. All right, let's go. This is gonna be fun. And then Axel starts singing and it's muffled and it just, the sound, it wasn't loud. I didn't have earplugs in that night because we're outside. You don't need earplugs possibly. I don't know, whatever. I didn't have them. Um, but it sounded muffled and kind of dim and dull even the music sounded kind of dim and dull when once axel started singing and did you hear the echoing part not really oh, okay. no i, didn't I felt get like much it was the echo i felt like it was echoing like i i don't even know i don't think it was like echoing off the buildings behind us or anything because there's not really really tall buildings or anything i think it was just um where we were like maybe the speakers weren't right or something i don't know it just and, or maybe i'm explaining the same thing you were like with the dull sounding yeah and it's just i Took it as echo. Took it as an echo more than your, yeah, a dull your, sound. What's that adjective? His echo. Mine is dull. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and as you said, we noticed it right away with this first song. Everybody around us was cheering and having a great time. But for some reason, like maybe they were just so hyped to like see it, see Guns mm-hmm. N' Roses that they're like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. But I mean, you always, not always. Most of the time, the first couple songs are always a little rough, right? Because you're you're adjusting the audio to like match these singers, these the venue, like that's what your audio team in the center there is doing. They're adjusting the audio, and just because it was good for the Pretenders doesn't mean it's going to be good for Guns N' Roses, right? Because we had no issues with the Pretenders whatsoever. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. The it didn't really fix itself though right like you would think no. like it kept being that kind of i want to say shitty sound it sounded shitty like i don't know um the music though was good if the music was just playing by itself without yeah. the vocals it sounded fine yeah 
But once the vocals started kicking in, that's when it sort of went dull, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I was getting very frustrated. Um, I did see over where we typically see Cubs games on the right left field, on the left field, that there were a lot of empty seats over there. And I noticed in the pit, the pit was sort of empty as well. I was like, we can just kind of move over there at some point. And I don't know if you wanted to or you were kind of hesitant to move. Well, I don't think we had talked about it yet. But the reason why we wanted to move. Well, did you want to move because of the sound or the other reason? What was the other reason? The spiders dropping. I wanted to move from the sound. Yes, I was going to get to the spiders. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to move because of the sound. I don't remember you saying to move until... The spiders were like, oh no, it was like the like second crazy. song. I like pointed over there. I was like, there's no, like I pointed out to you, like there's nobody over oh, here. Oh, I thought you wanted to sit down like behind the sound stage. And I was like, I don't want to go s- where there was like oh. behind home plate where there's nobody, which I'm sure is because the sound stage is there. So you can't really see the stage. And that's another thing. Yeah, I didn't, I forgot to br- bring out. You're right. Like behind home plate, those, that section was completely empty. Yeah. What, as you're saying, it was right behind the sound stage. We don't know why. I can't remember for like Guns N' Roses, not sorry. I can't remember for like Grateful Dead if that was full or not. I think it was full. Uh, we saw Green Day there, and I can't remember. I if don't that know was about Green either. Day. Yeah, but it was really weird. Um, but yeah, that's why I wanted to move for the sound. Oh, okay. More than anything. Okay. But we and I, I didn't know if you were comfortable with moving or not, so we kind of just sat where we were. And I, by that time, I was like, whatever. It's twenty five bucks. It's gonna be fun. It's fine. Whatever. $25 is still I think I kept reminding 25. you like 25 25 yeah. yeah. because the sound was not good. And I don't think it was anything about Wrigley it not being good. I think it was. Something was off. Something was off. But I don't think it was Wrigley. I don't think so either. I've Every show we've seen prior to that has been amazing. Um, although we haven't been that far up in we the 400 section. That, yeah. But I've heard people say that great sound all around wherever they go to see a show. It's been great. But. And it was for the pretenders, but right here when Axel would sing, it sounded like shit. It was not good at all. Yeah. Um, so we sat there for quite some time. Um yeah, I don't remember when we moved or when we left. I don't either. You had spiders dropping oh on my you. Gosh. Like so we first saw it like happen in front, like on the stairs, like one just went down and then went back up. And then there was one that was it actually dropped on me and like I freaked out and then like they just kept dropping like there was one that dropped like on a guy's back and then there's one that dropped near like almost on me again and that was the last i was like i can't i can't sit here and the person sitting next to us was like yeah they're all over the place yeah because I, I remember you standing up and like using the poster we had and like started swiping your hands and you yeah. like, almost hit the guy in the back I did. Head in front of you yeah <laughs> uh, and she was like yeah, this this is not like the girl, the woman next to you was like, this is not a, this is not a good. Yeah, like they're just all over the place. Yep. They probably dropped on us more, and we just didn't know it. But oh, I do remember like I'm already like <laughs> I do remember like reaching under my arm over to yours and like yes, just to freak that was you out. Some not nice. <laughs> you didn't have one drop on you. I may have. I may have felt one, and like that made me give shivers and whatnot. But for the most part, no, I don't think I did. Oh, I saw them all over the place, and I just. I couldn't sit there. So I didn't think that we were going to move to another seat. I th- thought we were just going to like go s- walk around and then po- potentially come back or just wander. Yeah. So I, at some point I also did, did wander around to find more beer or something. Um, I, I went down below to another section to see if they had different beer and whatnot. And they do. Um, and that was mainly I knew the beer I wanted was down there. So let's go down there. And as I was wandering around, I found an area that had a nice breeze come through. And I come back up to you, and I think you were done with the spiders. You're like, I want to move. I'm hot. This is bad sound. I have spiders all over me. I'm not having fun. This is not good. And I was like, $25. It's only $25. <laughs> um, but it's I was like, like we had to re- keep reminding each other that we only paid $25. Yeah. But we, I was like, all right, I found a spot that has a good breeze. It'll cool down. There's no spiders. It'll be fine. Let's go. It sounds a little bit better, too. Let's go. And we walk the concourse on the above the 200 section. And there's this little thing outside of, like, right behind home plate, I think. There's, like, this little Gallagher Way area, the little park area they built. And you can stand on the concourse on the level 200 section and look over at that. And that's where we end up standing for a while. And there's a decent breeze that would come in yeah. from yeah, there. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all. 
Um, well, we did go sit over kind of by like where our Cubs tickets are, a little bit higher up from that. Yeah. But there was no breeze right there, and it was so hot. I could not sit there. And there was a pool. We did sit there for a little bit, um, wandered down, and I, I didn't want to keep standing and wandering in between seats because there were people who had actual seats that were hanging out down there. And I don't like when people do that for me, so I was trying not to like move around a whole lot. But the seats we grabbed, I found ones like, oh, this is good. And the one you sat down next to me, you're like, I'm looking at a goddamn pool. I was like, oh, well, all right, let's go move. Type yeah, thing. but also there's no breeze there, and it was, there was really, no really hot. Yep. So. so we found the Gallagher way that we stood for. Um, breeze came in. I think November, no, Civil War came on. Mm. And I was like, I'm going to go down here and watch Civil War. So I went down into the 200 section. There were a few seats open, so I sat down there. And listened to Civil War, and there was a decent breeze that would come through every now and then. Came back up, hung out with you for a little bit, and then I can't remember when, but uh, later on also I went down. Yeah, there was, it was towards the end. So Civil War is towards the end. It must have been November rain, I think I went down, because I definitely wanted to be there. Was it? Because you couldn't, where we were, you couldn't really see everything. And you can't really see that well anyway from where we were sitting. Like, you can't see the stage that well. I spent most of the time watching the Jumbotrons, mm, the giant yeah. screens. Yeah. I don't know about you. I watched the Jumbo Tron. I didn't really care. So, um, saw them jumping around a little bit and whatnot. But yeah, I, I guess that's yeah. I don't remember seeing them on the stage. It was like yeah, watching the screens. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, sat down there and decent breeze would come in and text you like, "Hey, it's pretty nice down here." And then you came on down and it was a good section to watch the rest of the show from. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, that breeze or that heat was horrible for sure. Yeah, like if you didn't have any moving air, even when it was hot moving air, it was okay. But when you had no moving air, it was just like it's that temperature where you just like start sweating and it's, oh, I hate it. (laughs) Yeah, and you said it with the pretenders and the same is true for Guns N' Roses. They bounced around a lot for the set. Like, moving jumping running axel especially right going back and forth like definitely has some energy <laughs> that made me think of when like slash like gets up i don't know if he was on an amp or what he was on and he like jumps down but not like 40 years ago jumping down it was like Doop. <laughs> i mean i shouldn't say anything i would not be able to do it but i'm thinking of like randy how he like jumps oh, yeah, yeah. from you know and like actual jumps and like slash just kind of like steps down like yeah i'm gonna but i mean i guess it's kind of like when we saw iron maiden like they were putting their leg up and stuff on the amps yeah. and stuff and it was like oh probably 40 years ago you were doing way more but yeah we're not that old yet but we still can't do those things it was still a good show sorry it was no sorry. it was it was a good show um I, I was just surprised how much movement there was for how hot it was yeah that could they put on a good show and they had all right to be like, we're going to stand here or sit here and yeah. we're not doing shit. <laughs> right. We're sorry. Um, it's 200 fucking degrees in here. So this is what we're going to do. We're still going to put on a show. We're still going to give you a show, but it's not going to be as good. But no, it wasn't. It was, we're going to put on this show we would put on and they're not going to bitch about it. Like, yeah. Not, I don't, they may have said stuff about the heat like once or twice during the crowd interaction. Like, God damn, it's hot in here. You know, something along those lines, yeah. but you mean they're not like babies like us who are complaining about the heat? The yeah, they time? weren't complaining at all. <laughs> they didn't like. They put on a phenomenal show for the heat. Yeah, and uh, it yeah. made me think of when we went to Aragon to see Volby, and I was like, I wanted to dance so bad, but oh, it was yeah. so hot. And it's like I'm such a baby that I can't. The do rave, that. not the Aragon. The rave. Yes. Yes. We went to the Aragon once, and it was really fucking hot. Yes, a couple of times. A couple of times. Um. Anything else, I guess, about the set? Like, I I spent most of the time watching the screens, for sure. The imagery they had on the screens was really cool. It was cool, yeah. Um, I like the imagery. I mean, I guess I don't really know Guns N' Roses that much, but I did like the Im- imagery that they had, like, starting out. Was it, like, an engine or something? Like, Yeah, see, I can't remember. Some of it was very... Um, it reminded me a little bit of, like, a, a Mastodon type thing, where very mm, colorful... Yeah. And it like was sort of snake going like Slither had like a snake that went through. And yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's like an image that morphs into the same image, mm-hmm. like a skull 
going into the eye that would show yeah. you another skull. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So stuff like that. The Guns N' Roses logo with like the guns and shit firing out. Like oh yeah. So the imagery was really cool. The colors were really cool. A lot of blues, pinks, reds, colors. greens. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. but I mean, <laughs> oh, just funny. Just you the, said all the colors. You started naming all the colors. Well, I didn't name all of them. I didn't say yellow, <laughs> purple, purple, black, black, brown, white. Wait, is black a color? Whatever. We're not getting into <laughs> that bullshit. Um. Anyway. Uh, Sorry. Um. No, I thought it was a really. I I was pleasantly surprised because I was not. I was going just because we found really cheap tickets. I wasn't really excited to go see them. Um, and then with the heat, it made it even less exciting to go see them. And I was pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean. There was like a part, I I think midway through, I, I think it was more the spiders than anything. But I'm just like, I can't do that. Like, I'm bored. I can't do this. But I think it was more like I was focusing more on the spiders dropping and like than like the show. And once we moved down. And like stood by that railing, it was much better. And that's something we didn't mention right there, right? Is when we did move down, the sound got a little bit better. Oh, it did, yeah. yeah. So it could have just been the 400 section. I think when we sat in the seats, like I think you said for November rain, you went down to sit in, the, in those seats. That like sounded just fine. Yeah. So I think it could have been the 400 section wasn't, because it does have um like a roof thing that comes yeah. over so maybe it was echoing a little bit or just not yeah but i mean those final seats we were in also had the the dull sun. oh they had it has a, a yeah a sort of a roof but it's for the next section above the 300 section. yeah i guess yeah hmm. so i don't I, yeah i don't know why yeah i don't know but it, it did sound better down there and to say like everything else we've seen at wrigley has been on the field very this true. is the only time we've had stand seats yep so but again 25 dollars. i bought this Three weeks, four weeks before? Not even that, I don't think. It was pretty close to the Yeah, show. well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I think it was like two weeks before yeah, the I was, show. I was looking to buy tickets to a different event at Wrigley, and I tried to, I clicked the link too early. I was like, this isn't on sale yet. It comes on sale at 10. But check out what else we have. And then I saw like Guns N' Roses, and it's like $25 to $500. And I was like, where are those twenty five dollars? Let's just see if this is true. And I like took the little scale thing and I took the five hundred and scrolled it all the way to uh, twenty five, and it was like all of the four hundred section. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, Maybe I heard the guys next to us say that they spent twenty five dollars too. And the guy on the train coming down after um, was talking oh, to other yeah. people. I was listening to him. Yeah, and he's like, "Yep, we drove in tonight. Um, we're staying at this hotel here." And we, you know, we bought the twenty five hundred dollar or twenty five hundred <laughs> the twenty five dollar tickets like we did in high like high school and college, and we worked our way up to the front the cheap seats or the more expensive seats. Yeah, and I was like honestly, there was nobody over there. Yeah. on left field. So I think that's the other thing that, not that I want to bring up, but there was an article that I saw, um, and it was while we were at the show, but. Um, it was more like what Wrigley was doing because of the heat. Like you could bring in, I, I it for the games it's like one water bottle. Oh, is it um, per person sealed? It has to be sealed. It can't be like a reusable water bottle or whatever. Um, and then um, that they were having the cooling fans, and then I think there was a bus somewhere like off the by the bleachers or something that you could like a shuttle bus. Um, like not a shuttle bus, but like an air conditioned bus. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that was like. The thing, and then Gallagher Way had something also. Okay. But anyways, so they had some things going on to keep people cool or like, you know, if you needed to cool down or whatever. So, but in that article, it said um, basically like something like, this is what Wrigley is doing for the sold out show for Guns N' Roses. And I remember showing that to you and I was just like looking around. I'm like, okay, if they sold all these tickets and people, but you bought them from MLB. It's yeah. not like you bought them secondhand. Did not buy them secondhand. So no. they were still selling tickets when, like two weeks before the show, and there were so many open seats. There were. There was no way this was sold out. There's no way at all. I 100% agree. This was not a sold out show. So I don't know where they got that information. The cooling fans were decent. We passed one of those up there. And then the water, you mentioned the water. Um, I'm always shocked 
to learn that you're allowed to bring water into baseball games and apparently concerts. I think you should be able to bring water everywhere. I agree. A hundred percent. You either bring it in for free or it's free on yeah. site, either bottled water or some way to refill your water. And they do have drinking fountains here. So you can refill your water. Yeah, you said water. that. And I've never noticed one. But Usually never, by the bathrooms. I guess I've never like looked for yeah. one. And when we go to the games, I normally use that same restroom that yeah. we always use, and there's not a water fountain right there. So there's got to be one very close. There to probably it. is. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And this was so much different, also, because I mean, at least when we were on the concourse, it wasn't like a baseball game where you couldn't move on the concourse. It was like people were slowly either trickling in or they were already at their seats. And even when we left, we left during Paradise City. To get to the train. At the very, very end. Very, very it, end. Yeah. yeah, like they were getting done with Paradise City and we walked to the gate to leave. So we saw the, we didn't leave early. I want to <laughs> preface that, but it was like, we kind of knew that we needed to get to the train to get home. Because um, that's the other thing. It's like another hour train ride. We're like, no, fuck that. If you, if you missed the train. Yeah. And if you're waiting on train because everybody's waiting on the red line because they all get out and can't funnel up into the platform, yeah, then you could be standing there for a long time. Yeah. And it's too hot. We don't want to be doing yeah. that. No. And when we did move, uh, we moved down and we, there's, so in the main concourse, there's steps going up to that level 100 concourse where then you can go down to your level 100 seats or up to your 200 seats. And we were over on the right field. So stage left. Yeah. <laughs> stage <laughs> left. Um, and there's a really nice breeze that came down, came down off of yeah. that. And we just stood right there and it was like, oh, this is so, so nice. Yeah. So that's a good place to hang out if it's too hot um, over there by the concourse on the level 200 area. If the wind's blowing just right, that 400 area is so, so nice. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that in April baseball. October baseball, but you have to imagine October baseball, which yeah. is, you know, for the Cubs, very rare. Yeah. It's been decent the last 10 hey years. one year they their final game was on october 1st so they played october <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> done sports ball talking Anywho, um, and then the refillable water touching yeah. on that real quick i did refill one of our waters once oh, okay and it was warm water which isn't bad like it's water but it was warm water and i wanted ice cold water so i was like i'm not doing that again i'm just gonna go get I'm, i'll pay the seven bucks for cold cold water yeah because i want the cold water i thought that was ridiculous for how hot it was that they were still selling bottles of water for 750 because in my mind i'm like I, I get like a venue needs to make money but that's ridiculous to sell it that high it is but at least they are saying you can bring it in whatever you, can bring. you want yeah and i didn't read that article until we were already there otherwise we probably would have brought like four bottles of water the night before, we knew it was going to be hot, so we stuck water in the fridge. In the fridge, fridge. yeah. I guess what we should have... Uh, you can't it. have... You can't do that because it needs to be sealed. Yeah. So you can't do that. Um, yeah, you can't freeze it because I thought it would burst. Maybe when I got a beer, get a cup of ice yeah. and then refill that. Yeah. Like, that could have been a little better, but... Anyways, I mean... Agreed. I We made it work, and... Yeah. I just... I think that that's... I, I just think the venue should not charge for water. Yeah, I... I I think water should be free or a free option. And there was a free option. There are two free options with drinking That's fountains true. and bring your own water in. That's so true. the venue then selling water on top of those free options, I'm perfectly fine with that because yeah. there are the free options. Um, if you wanted cold, cold water, I bet we could have got a glass of ice Probably. for free. Probably. Or buy a beer and a glass of ice in. Yeah. Uh, buy a glass. They'll <laughs> give you one because you're yeah. already paying for the beer. Yeah. Um. In, in any... In any case, uh, I thought this was an amazing show no, me for too. 25 fucking dollars. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of the heat real quick, you brought up that we saw Volbeat in Milwaukee at the Rave recently. Yes. It was pretty fucking hot during that. It was, like you said, I don't know if we said that, but it... No, it was... I did say it was hot. I, I did don't know say if you that. said it was like a furnace or not. I no, said that, that was, was really hot because we. I wanted to dance and I couldn't dance. Oh, right, right. Yeah. It was insanely hot there too. It may have been cooler there than it was at Wrigley. In all honesty. Probably. But my question for you, what one were you more comfortable at? Take the spiders out of the equation. Take the sound out of the equation. Heat-wise, were you more comfortable at the Rave or at Wrigley? I liked Wrigley better just because there was a breeze every once in a while. And then, like, towards the end, there was a breeze, like, constantly. So then it, I feel like 
when it is so hot, if you have air movement, then it doesn't feel like that suffocating hot. Where at um, the rave, there was like no air movement, at least where we were most of the time. Uh, if you went upstairs, there was air movement, and like kind of over by the stairs, there was air or movement. Or down to the second that bar or by the, those windows. Yeah, yeah. Or down by those windows. Yeah. By the way, if you were like on the floor in the middle of the floor where we were most of the time, there was no air movement. So and you have hence, to be in that area for the yeah, music. Hence, I used a paper plate to have <laughs> air movement. So I would, I think it was, even though it was hotter at Wrigley, I think that was a little bit better. See, I thought the same thing. Okay. And I think for the same reasons too. Of, yeah. Even though it was hotter, it you could move around to a spot that had air. And you're not getting the best view, but you're getting some view of the stage and you're getting some air movement. Right. We're at the rave if because we didn't have VIP tickets. So you either had to be upstairs at the patio to get air, which they did have the show on. But you said the sound wasn't there was like no sound. There was, was no sound up there. up there. And then the same if you if you went down a floor to by the windows, you could hear the concert. You could hear a lot better than you could on the roof, yeah. surprisingly to me. Yeah, just you're not seeing the show as well. Yep. So um yeah, same thing. And I don't I don't want to sound like we're shitting on the rave. The rave is one of my favorite venues of all time. And even though we had a bad experience because of the heat. It's kind of funny. We've had a lot of bad experiences at the rave, and we always say it's still a good show. It is. I don't get that. I know. I, don't, <laughs> I know. Like they're this one thing wasn't quite good or this thing yeah. wasn't great. But it was still awesome. But it was awesome. Yeah. And I, I love the rate. I love the character. I love that it's privately owned. Um, the music there is good. The staff is great. Like everything about, oh, this isn't a show about. The I know. I was like, we need to do a whole thing um, on the rate. I just wanted to be like. Yeah. You want to do the comparison. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, yeah. Wrigley was a little better, even though it was hotter. I still love the rave. It's still fucking awesome. I'm going back there to see shows again and again and again, even if it's hot. Same with Berkeley. I'm going back there to see shows. And now that I know there's cheap ass fucking tickets for 25 bucks in the 400 section. Just take some bug spray. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a blast. I thought this was great. And 25 fucking dollars to see this. Yeah. show. I was so excited. I think that's why like all night, like even with the bad experience of the heat and the spiders, and the sound shitty sound up there it, it yeah. was just like we paid nothing to, we've paid more to go to a small venue show than what this was and this was like a stadium show at wrigley yeah i wanted to look that up because we saw um all right i was gonna say we went to reggie's at the beginning of the year and saw a show for more but it was actually 12 bucks so. <laughs> oh yeah that was the tribute band right it was yeah yeah i think chemist was more though how much was Chemist? Chemist was twenty bucks. Oh, okay. So five bucks less to see Chemist. Like I, I was shocked to find twenty five dollars for a legend band like yeah. Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Which you've said, like, has Kiss been here yet? Kiss will be here later in November, okay. I wanna think, at the All State Arena. Like, and I look you from keep time to saying, time. Like, cause I think the cheapest ticket you found is like seventy or Maybe, fifty dollars. Yeah, right around seventy. I want to say. Yeah, and you keep saying like, "Oh, if they go down, if they go down, we'll go out there." But otherwise, I mean, we've seen Kiss, which is weird. I think I don't know why that is. Like, why Kiss is sold out and Guns N' Roses wasn't. Typically, like scalpers pick all this shit up, and maybe that's maybe why they, it was sold out for Wrigley. Like it was like, but oh, shit, it's still, you bought your ticket on MLB. You didn't buy I it did. through a scalper, so I did. I don't know. Um, $25 for live music. Yeah. Like that's damn cheap. You can find cheaper out there at the smaller clubs. Yep. The music is arguably just as good at those smaller clubs when you go because it's live music. Live music's fucking awesome. Go find it. You can find it at all price ranges and different experiences all around. But regardless of how shitty the sound was, it was still a great fucking night. It was. So go check out some live music. Bye.